Hey guys, and welcome to this video on the Python programming language and machine learning. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to write a program that detects breast cancer based off of data. Now, breast cancer is a common cancer for women around the world, and early detection of breast cancer can greatly improve prognosis and survival chances by promoting clinical treatment to patients as soon as possible. So I think it's really cool that you can possibly save someone's life from data. Okay, so right now I am on Google's website called colab.research.google.com. And the reason why I'm on this website is because it makes it really easy to get started programming in Python. So you don't have to install Python onto your laptop or your desktop computer. You can just go to this link on your browser or in your browser and then log in to your Google account. So you do need a Google account and you can immediately get started programming in Python. So it's really easy and very quick. All right, so let's go ahead and get started writing our machine learning Python program. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. I'm going to click File and then click New Python 3 Notebook. And what we'll see is a new tab opens up for us and a new cell also uh, is created for us. So to start writing in Python, you can just start um, writing your code right inside of this cell. So I do a small print statement saying hello and then you can run it by clicking this button here to the left and then we'll see that hello gets displayed below now I'm going to get rid of this display by clicking this X button here and I'm going to click within the cell again and click this code button to add a new cell so now I'm going to print another statement and I'm going to put Python is amazing exclamation point and I'm going to run this cell by itself. And we can see that Python is amazing get displayed below. So let's exit that. And now I want to run all of this. Uh, I want to run both the print statements. So I want to run both of these cells. So I'm going to click run time and click run all. And then we see that both hello and Python is amazing gets displayed. All right. So I am done with this second cell. So I'm going to click inside of it, go to the right, and click these three dots here, and then click Delete Cell to get rid of the cell. And then, of course, I'm going to get rid of this print statement, uh, or this this Hello print statement here, and then I'm going to get rid of this print statement within the, uh, the cell itself. All right. So now, let's go ahead and write our program now that we're a little familiar with this tool. So the first thing I like to do is create a description of what my program does. So again, this program detects breast cancer based off of data. Now, immediately when you see the word detect, um, you can think of the machine learning uh, class, a, a machine learning classifier. So we want to basically classify the data as either cancerous or non-cancerous. Okay, so that's how we're going to detect cancer within the data, detect cancerous cells within our data. All right, so let's go ahead and create a new cell by clicking that code button there. And here we're going to import the libraries. Okay, so I'm going to import NumPy and I'm going to give it an alias. So we're going to call it MP. I'm also going to import pandas and I'm going to give it an alias, call it PD. And then I'm going to import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT. And I'm going to import seaborn as SNS. Now, this might not be all the libraries that we need, but I know that these are the ones that I'm definitely going to use immediately. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and run this cell and make sure I don't have any misspellings and everything looks good here. It seems to check out. So I'm going to create a new cell here. And here we're going to load the data. So since I'm on Google's website, I have to use Google's library to load the data from my computer. And to do that, just type in from google.colab import files okay and then we'll create a variable called upload it and set it equal to 
files.upload. And then we'll create a variable called df, which is short for data frame. And set it equal to our pandas read underscore CSV method or function. And then we're going to take in the uh, name of the file, which is data.csv. All right. Once we have that data in our data frame, I want to print the first seven rows of data. So to do that, I'm just going to type df.head and then input the value 7 as a parameter to get the first seven rows of data. So let me go ahead and run this cell. And we see we have this option to choose file. So I'm going to click that option and go to the location where my data is, which I'm currently on. And the data is called data.csv. So I'm going to click that and then click open. And now we're loading the file and we are also printing the first seven rows of data. So if we look at this data set, we can see a column called ID, which is the ID of the patients. We see a column called diagnosis, which tells us which patient has, um, has cancer and which one doesn't. So the diagnosis M stands for malignant. So that means that their cell is malignant or harmful, and that's a cancerous cell. And then we don't have any examples of B9 here, but B9 is represented by the letter B in this column, diagnosis. And that means that the cell is not harmful, so it's non-cancerous. Okay? And we also see some other columns called radius underscore mean, texture underscore mean, um, smoothness underscore mean, area underscore mean, perimeter underscore mean, compactness underscore mean. I think you can read it off yourself. But uh, the the main thing here is that we have these, these column names, and then we have a underscore and then another name here. So if I continue here to the right of the data, you'll see that it repeats some of the column names for at least the first word. So such as uh, radius here, radius underscore SE this time. So now we're pinning underscore SE. Uh, we have texture again, but this time it's underscore SE and that stands for standard error. And if we continue scrolling, we'll see that we get a different word to append to these uh, column names such as radius and texture. And this time we're appending underscore worse. Okay, so this is some of the data, just some things to notice. And then we have some column here called unnamed32. And it looks like it has a bunch of empty values or NAN values. All right. So let's continue here. I'm going to click back into our cell here and then click a uh, click code up here to get a new cell. And I'm going to scroll on up. And I want to count the number of rows and columns in the data set. Okay, so to do that, I just type df.shape and this will give us the number of rows and the number of columns. So I can see that we have 569 rows and remember each row represents a patient. So this is 500 and this is data on 569 patients. And then we have 33 columns. So that means that there's 33, uh, 33 uh, features or uh, different data points on these 569 patients. All right. Now, from what we saw earlier, that last column looks like it won't give us much information. So there may be less than 33 um, valuable data points. OK, so let's create a new cell. And this time I want to get a count of the number of empty um, of empty values in each column. And remember empty is uh, empty is N A N or capital N A N, you know, all caps or uh, just N A. All right. So all those values tell me that 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 value at that column is empty. Okay, so 
to get this count, all I have to do is type df dot is in a and then dot sum and then I run this cell here and now we get all of the columns in our data set and we get a sum of the count of empty values for each column. So right now it looks like all these columns have uh, no empty values which is amazing except for this very last column which we saw earlier called unnamed32 it has 569 empty values so I think it's safe to say that we can get rid of this column because there's only 569 rows of data alright so that means that there are there's literally no data in that column so I'm gonna go back here click inside this cell and I'm gonna create a new cell and I want to get uh, I want to get rid of that column so we're gonna drop the column and I'm gonna type that here in comments so we're gonna drop the column with all missing values and really we're dropping all columns with missing values uh, which which I'm gonna show you how to do here but because we only have one column with all missing values then um, oh, I'm sorry since we, only, since we have uh, only one column with missing values we're only dropping that one column okay all right so to drop these columns just type df dot drop in a and we want to drop on the column so the axis is going to equal one and this gives us a new data set without that empty column so I want to store that back into our original data frame so I just type df equals df dot drop in a so now this will drop all of the columns with empty values and in this case we only have one okay so I'm going to run this all right and now let's create a new cell and let's get the new count of the number of rows and columns okay so again to do this we just type df.shape and I'm gonna run this and now we see that we still have 569 rows of data but this time we only have 32 columns and that's because we dropped that last column called unnamed 32 all right so let's create a new cell here since we're just kind of exploring our data and cleaning it up right now before we create our model which is going to be doing the classification or detection of the cancerous cells all right so now I want to get a count of the number of malignant which is represented by the letter M or B9 which is represented by the letter B cells okay so to do that all I have to do is type DF and then I want information from the diagnosis column and I want the count of the values so I just type value underscore counts and this should let us know the count for each value so it looks like we have 357 different or 357 rows of data where the patient cells are benign so they don't have cancer and then we have 212 rows of data where the patient cells are malignant and I misspelled malignant up here malignant all right um, 212 rows of data so that's 212 patients who sadly have cancer but that doesn't mean that you know they would pass away anything it just means that they have cancer all right so that's based off of our data set now we can do a little better and we can get a visual of this so I'm gonna create a new cell and here we're going to visualize the count so to do that I'm going to use the Seaborn library so I just type SNS dot count plot and then I have to tell it which uh, which column I want to get a count of so that's 
the column in our data frame called diagnosis. So I just type DF, then my brackets, and then I put in, uh, in quotes here, diagnosis, the name of the column. Okay. And I give it a label on the uh, Y axis and I call it count. Okay, so let's run this. So now we see on the Y axis, we have the, uh, the count of, of malignant and benign uh, values in the diagnosis column. Okay, and now we can see a little bit more visually that there are more patients with uh, benign cells, so who don't have cancer, than there are patients who have uh, cancer. So it's just a, a visualization, but here we have actual numbers above, and uh, that's uh, I think that's more visually appeasing than just simply seeing numbers, but really I'd rather see both. All right, so let's go ahead and create a new cell. And let's look at the data types. So here I'm going to type look at the data types to see which columns need to be encoded. So these are the columns that I need to transform into um, maybe a, a number value. So like an integer or a float. So I'm looking really for like categorical data or object data types in Python here. So to do this, I just type df.dtypes and I run this cell. Oops, I put S types. So let's put D types. And then I run the cell and we get all of the columns back and their data type here to the right. So it looks like ID is a integer value. And um, now that I think about it, ID won't give us much information um, for the patient. It really just identifies the patient, correct? So we can probably get rid of that, that column as well. It's probably not necessary. The diagnosis column is an object, okay, and we know that it that is an object because it's uh it contains the letters M and B. Those are the values in that column, so it's an object. It's a string or categorical data, and then everything else, all the other values, seem to be floats, and we see that we no longer have that column called uh, what was it called unnamed thirty two. So that column is indeed gone from our data set. All right. So I'm going to click back in the cell here. Click uh, click here to add a new cell. All right. And now I want to encode the categorical data values. So here in the comment, I'm going to put encode the categorical data values. So to do that, I'm going to need to use a library. So from sklearn.preprocessing, I'm going to import label encoder. All right, and then I'm going to create a variable called label encoder underscore y and set it equal to label encoder. And now we want to transform our categorical data into a num into numbers. So I'm going to uh, type label encoder underscore y dot fit transform fit underscore transform and now I want it I need to tell it what data I want it to transform and that's the data in our data frame which is at location um, one right so the the index the index in our data frame for diagnosis is at index one. ID would be at index zero. Radius mean would be at index two. Okay. And I also want to tell it to get all of the rows. So to do that, I just type a colon here. So I'm telling it get all the rows and get the data from uh, index from the column diagnosis, which is at index one. Okay, and more specifically, I need to tell it the values. 
right? So we're, we're inputting um, the the values here. Uh, we're basically making it an array. We're inputting an array inside of this uh, inside of this function or method. Okay. And actually, you know what? Let me just copy this here and show you what I mean. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. Df uh, dot i log uh, da, 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 dot that. Oh, I misspelled values. Okay, so I need to change that up here as well. All right, so let me run this again. And so now you can see uh, that we're showing the values of our data frame, and it is a array. So I'm inputting an array here, and that's all I want to show you guys. Okay, so now if I run this, everything should be okay. Yes, excellent. So it's still printing. Um, it's now printing the uh, the encoded value. So let me do Control Z here, show you guys what it looked like before. So here we have the values M and Bs, and now the value M is going to be represented by the number one, and the value B will be represented by the number zero. So now if I get rid of this again and run it, you can see that we get a bunch of ones and zeros from our label encoder underscore Y here. All right. Now I want to put this data back into my data frame. So to do that, I just type DF dot I lock and I want all the rows from uh, the diagnosis column to be equal to this new transformation. So let's run this here. And everything seems to be okay. And now, if I highlight this and I copy it and then paste it here and run this, we'll see that now we get all ones and zeros. Okay. And I know that one matches with uh, the 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 string M, and I know that zero matches with the string B because of our data. So we can see just from when we listed the first seven rows of data that the diagnosis was M. So for the first seven rows down here, that value is still M, but now it's been transformed to one. So we can see the first seven rows should all be one. And then if we were to look for where the string was B, we'll see in, in row I guess row at index 19, there would be a B in the original data. Okay. All right. So I'm going to just get rid of that. Let's rerun our cell. All right. And I'm going to create a new cell. And here I'm going to create a create a pair plot. Okay. So to do this, I'm going to use Seaborn again. And I type SNS pair plot. And I need to tell it what data I want it to um, pair with, what columns I want it to pair with or match with. So to do that, all we have to do is type uh, in DF here. And I can do DF dot I like if I want to get just a sample of my data here. So I want all the rows and I want all the rows from index one up to um, index six, but not including index six. Okay. So we're not including the index six here in the plot. So let's run this. And this may take a little time. And so now we can see the columns. So the columns one to five. So we see diagnosis, which again is, is at index one. We see radius mean, which is at index two. We see texture mean, which is at index three. We see perimeter mean, which is at index four. We see area mean, which is at index five. And then we don't see any more columns. So we see that we, we're, we're comparing one, two, three, four, five columns. Okay. Now this looks okay. Um, I can see that one, some of these graphs are going off the screen here. So 
I'm just going to change this to 5 so that we only get 4 columns this time and hopefully they are all fitting on the screen. Okay, so that looks good. And let's make it look even better. We could do better, right? So I want to see the diagnosis points on these graphs. So to do that, I just type hue equals diagnosis. And let's run this again. And now that looks so much better. We can see the B9 cells, which are blue, represented by the number zero. And we can see the malignant cells, which are the cancerous cells, uh, represented by the number one and they're orange. Okay. And when I'm done coding this up, I probably will, will put all of the columns here with the um, diagnosis labels. Uh, just so that, you know, you can have all of the, you can see all of the columns being paired together. But for this small video here, or this small example for this video, uh, it makes it really quick to generate these graphs. It'll take a while for it to generate a graph for all of the columns that we have in our data set. All right, so I think that looks great. Let's go ahead and add a new cell. And let's now print the first five rows of our new data set. So, Print the first five rows of the new data. And to do that, I just type df.head. All right. So now we have a diagnosis, which are all ones and zeros. And we no longer have our column um, with all of the empty values at the end. So this is our new cleaner data. Um, again, I don't think we need that ID column, but I'm not going to drop it off. Uh, we're going to get rid of it a different way than using the the uh, drop method or function. Okay, so we're going to get rid of that column when we're actually training our model to detect cancer. Okay, all right. So um, let's continue exploring our data a little bit more. Let's look at the correlations. So here I'm going to put get the correlation of the columns. And to do that, I can type df.core. But I'm just going to get a sample of, of, the, uh, of the columns. So to do that, I'm going to type df.ilock. And I want all the rows from columns 1 to 12, but not including uh, the, the column at index 12. And when I say 1 to 12, I mean indexes, right? So not including the the index, uh, of the column index at 12. And we're only starting from the column diagnosis. Now the actual first first column is the ID column, and it's at index 0. So I just want to make sure that that is very clear. All right. And then I want the, the correlations. So I type dot core. And now if I run this, we can see the correlation between or the correlations between each column. So we can see how one column can influence the other. And so it looks like radius mean and it looks like radius mean has a uh, influence on the diagnosis column. And it seems like perimeter mean has a uh, positive influence on the diagnosis column as well. And concave points mean has a positive um, influence. And then fractal dimension mean has a negative correlation or influence on the diagnosis column. And of course, if we have a value of zero, that means that that column has no influence on the other column. All right. Okay, so let me go back up here, click inside this cell, and let's create a new cell. Okay, now I want to visualize that correlation. So visualize the cor correlation. Oh, the correlation, sorry. So we're going to visualize the correlation. 
Now to do that, I'm going to use the Seaborn library again. So just type sns.heatmap and I need to tell it what columns um, I want to show. So to do that, I'm just going to type df.ilock and I want to show every row from the column at index 1 up to but not including the column at index 12 and again I want to show the correlation alright so let me run this and now we get a nice visualization of the correlation that we saw up here okay but you know what we could do better we can make this look so much better and um, so much more visually ap appealing so right now I can see you know that uh, uh, let's see here if I look at the diagnosis column here I can see that radius mean has a a decent positive uh, correlation to it or influence and I could tell that by the color here so if I look over here to the color I can see it's somewhere around here somewhere between uh, well really somewhere between maybe uh, well, somewhere between here and here is what that value will be. But I'd rather display the values on each of these cells uh, like we have in our table. So it'll make it easier to really tell what the value is. And if I look up here, I can see the value is 0.73. So yeah, it is somewhere between here and here. All right, so let me go ahead and add in that value into our heat map. So to do that, all I have to do is uh, put anote equals true and then run this. All right. And what we see is that now we get the numbers inside of our cell. But it looks kind of cluttered, especially right around here. It's kind of hard to see the numbers. So let's change the size of these cells and I can do that by typing plt dot figure and then within there put fig fig size equals and we'll do 10 comma 10 and let's run this there we go so this looks so much better and we now have the correlation number associated with each cell it looks so much better but uh, let's make it look even better. I kind of like percentages. So to put percentages here, I just put comma in our heat map method or function. And then I'm going to type FMT equals 0.0%. And let's run this. And now we get back percentages. And I think that looks the best out of all of the visualizations we've done so far for the heat map okay and we can see how each of these columns influence the other and these are only some of these are only the uh these are only a few of the columns right so we don't have all of the columns um in our data set here all right so anyways let's create a new cell okay and now let's finally get down to what this whole video is about and what we're trying to do, which is uh, detect cancerous cells. Now that we've explored the data, we've looked at it, we've uh, manipulated it, we've cleaned it, let's finally get down and dirty and create our model to detect these cancerous cells. So, first thing we need to do is split the data into independent and dependent data sets. So here I write in the comments, split the data set into we we'll do uh, uh, yeah, into independent. We we'll do independent first, and we'll call it X, and dependent we we'll call it Y. Data sets. All right. So I'm gonna create a variable called X and set it equal to df dot iloc, and it's gonna be or it's gonna contain all of the rows of data from the the column after diagnosis so that's the column at index 2 
all the way up to, but not including uh, the 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 index at or the column at index 31, which there there are no columns at index 31. So it's all the way up to the very last column, which is at index 30. Okay. So hopefully that wasn't too confusing. All right, and I want it to be an array, so I just type dot values. And then I'm going to create my dependent data set. So we're going to call it y and set it equal to df.ilock. And I want to get all of the rows from the column at index 1, which is the column called diagnosis. All right, and I want it to also be an array. All right, so now if we look at the... Uh, the data type for one of these will see that it should be a NumPy array and it is okay but before the data type was a data frame a pandas data frame and we can see that here all right now the reason why I changed these into uh, arrays are because of the parameters that we're going to be taking in for our model Okay, so let me just run this again, and everything seems to be okay. I'm going to go ahead and create a new cell now that we have our independent data set and our dependent data set, which is our target value. So our dependent data set is going to tell us um, the it's going to tell us if the patient has cancer or not, and our independent data set, which is X, is going to tell us um, the features that that can detect if the the patient has cancer or not. So let me say that again. Y has the the diagnosis, which is whether or not the patient has cancer, and X has the features that will help us make this help us determine if the patient has cancer or not. Okay, so those are our dependent and Y is our independent data set. Okay, so um, let's split the data set into 75% training and 25% testing. So we're going to train our model on 75% of this data and we're going to test it on 25% of the data. So here we're going to split the data set into 75% training. and 25% testing. Okay, so I need to use a, another library. So from sklearn.model underscore selection, I want to import train underscore test underscore split. And I'm gonna create some variables. One's gonna be called x underscore train, then x underscore test then y underscore train and y underscore test and I'm going to set it equal to the method or function called train test split and we're going to input the data set x and y and then you tell it the test size so that's going to be 25 percent which is 0 0.25 and then I'm going to give it a random state value of zero, and you can be uh, you can put any value there as long as you keep the random state value the same, uh, depending on what you want to do, really. And then I'm going to run this here. Hopefully, there's no errors, and there aren't. So it looks like we have split our data into 75% training and 25% uh, testing. So we have a uh, 25% uh, of our sorry, 25% of our data is X test, and of course, Y test correlates to that uh, X test data set. And then the 75% is X train and Y train correlates with that uh, with that data set with that X train data set. Okay. All right. So let's um, scale the data to bring all the features to the same level of magnitude. So this means that the data will be within a specific range. For example, zero to 100 or zero to one. And I'm going to put that here. We're going to scale scale the data. So this is called 
feature scaling. Okay, so I need to use another library. So from sklearn.preprocessing, I'm going to import standard scalar. And I'm going to create a variable called sc, which stands for standard scalar. And I'm going to set it equal to standard scalar. Okay, now I'm going to transform our data. So to do that, I just type sc.fit underscore transform. And I want to transform our our features. So that's x underscore train. And I'm just going to copy this here and paste it. Because not only do I want to do it on x train, I want to do it on all of my feature data or my um, independent data. So that's also x underscore test. Okay. And I want to take this transformation and I want to I want to store it back into my original data set. So to do that, I'm going to type x underscore train is equal to that. And then here I'm going to type x underscore test is equal to that transformation, to the new transformations. OK, so let me go ahead and run this. And it looks like I have a few errors. Let's see, x underscore train equals sc. Uh, I misspelled transform. So transform is missing uh, an f here. And let me run that. And that looks like everything ran OK. All right. So now we can print our x train data. And we can see our values now. OK. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and run this again. Everything looks to be working well. So I'm going to create a new cell. And now I'm going to create a few models, maybe three, to try to detect cancer. So I'm going to create a function for this. So create a function for the models. And here I'm just going to type def, a definition. We're going to call it models. It's going to take in x train, and it's going to take in y train. All right, and for my first model, I'm going to use logistic regression. So it's going to be a logistic regression model. And I need to use a library. So from sklearn.linear underscore model, I'm going to import logistic regression. And I'm going to create a variable called log and set it equal to logistic regression and I'm going to input a random state value equal to zero which is what we had up top as well and then I'm going to train our data by typing the fit method or function on and uh, inputting our training data so on our training data all right and then I'm going to uh, create another model maybe a decision tree so to do that, I also need to use another library. So from sklearn.tree, I'm going to import decision tree classifier. And then I'm going to create a variable called tree and set it equal to decision tree classifier. And we're going to give it some parameters like the criterion and set it that criterion equal to entropy. And I need to give it a random state, the same random state, which will be equal to zero. And then we need to train this model. So I'm just going to use that fit function again, or method. And we're going to do that on our training data, which is x train and y train. And then I'm going to create another model, uh, maybe a uh, random forest uh, classifier. And to do that, also need to use another library. So from sklearn.ensemble, I'm going to import random forest classifier. And I'm going to create a variable called forest and set it equal to random forest classifier. And we're going to 
give it a number of estimators. So the number of estimators is going to equal 10. The criterion is going to equal entropy. And then the random state is going to equal 0. All right, and then I'm going to train this model. So forest.fit, and we're going to train it on that same data. So on our training data, which is x train and y train. Okay. Now that we have our three models, I want to print the model's accuracy on the training data. So to do that, all I have to do is use this score method or function. So I'm going to just type print um, the, I'm going to print zero logistic regression training accuracy. And then I'm going to tell it the accuracy, which is log dot score x underscore train y y underscore train. All right, so I'm going to just copy this and I'm going to paste it uh, two more times. And so the next one will be at index one and the next one will be at index two. So that's our third model. Um, this here, we're going to change this from logistic regression to decision tree classifier and we're going to change log to tree and then this one here we're going to change this to random forest classifier and we're going to change log here to forest all right okay and then we need to return our models so I'm going to return the log model, I'm going to return our uh, decision tree and the uh, random forest classifier. Okay, so now if I run this, okay, everything looks good. Let's create a new cell and I'm going to create a variable called model and set it equal to models x underscore train, y underscore train. So right here we are getting all of the getting all of oh getting all of the models. Okay. So if I run this, it looks like there's a mistake. So let me see here what I call this models. Okay, so let's see what the error message is. Um looks like I misspelled forest in uh in my function. So let's see forest here. And now let's run this and let's rerun this here. Okay, so no errors. And now we can see how well our models did on the training data. So we can see the logistic regression training accuracy was 99%. It looks like the model that did the best was the decision tree classifier at 100% or 1.0. And then the random uh, forest classifier did uh, second best at classifying the training data at 99.5%. Okay. All right, so I'm going to create a new cell here and we're gonna test our data on the testing data. So we're gonna test, I'm sorry, test our model on the testing data. And to do that, I'm going to use a confusion matrix. So uh, test data on confusion matrix. And we're going to test test model accuracy on test data on confusion matrix. OK. So to do that, I'm just going to type from sklearn.metrics. I'm going to import the confusion matrix. Okay, so I'm going to create a variable called CM and set it equal to confusion underscore 
matrix and we're going to input our testing data so that's y underscore test and we're going to put in our models prediction so I'm going to put in the model at position 0 which is the logistic regression model and I'm going to uh, put in its predictions for the testing data so x test so it's going to give us what it thinks the um, actual values are for our features in the testing data and then y test of course is the actual values all right so let's run this okay so it looks like that ran fine I'm going to print the confusion matrix so we're going to print CM and now we see the confusion matrix which shows the true positives true negatives false negatives and false positives all right it looks like our looks like our model here has a uh, true positive of or equal to 86 and it has a um, a true negative value of 50 okay and then these other ones actually always get confused but um, this right here is false positive so it has a false positive value of 4 and then it has a uh, false negative value of 3 okay so to get the accuracy of our model on this testing data we can uh, calculate it using these values so I'm going to create a variable called TP for a true positive and it's at position 0 0 and create a variable for a true negative which is at position 1 1 and then create a variable for our false negative which is at position 1 0 that's our false negative okay and then false positive is at position 0 1 okay now uh, underneath the other print statement I'm going to print testing accuracy equals and the accuracy equals the true positive plus the true negative divided by the true positive plus the true negative plus the false negative plus the false positive okay so if I run this now we can see that the logistic regression models accuracy on the testing data is about 95.1 percent okay so we can also get the precision and the recall this way as well um, but that would take some time so I'm going to show you guys a different way to get some metrics on how well our models are doing and this right here is only getting us the uh, data or the accuracy for one model which is the logistic re regression model so let's get the data for all of our models so I'm going to just put this in a loop so for I in uh, what's our model our models called model right so for I in range I want the length of our model and then um, yeah I want all of this to be within the loop okay and now I don't want to just keep getting the logistic regression model I want to get the model at position I all right so now this will give us all of the models and also I want to print which model or the index of uh, the model being being printed I want to I want to see the accuracy for each model so I need to say something like model uh, model 1 model 2 model 3 so model I all right and let's see anything else maybe I will do a new line so I'm just gonna create this print statement with no uh, no parameter values so let's run this okay and so now we see model 0 which is the logistic regression model has 95.1 percent accuracy on the testing data 
model one, which is the decision tree classifier, has a 93.7% accuracy on the testing data. And it looks like the model that does the best on the testing data is the random forest classifier, and it has an accuracy of 96.5% on the testing data. All right. So I said earlier I will show you guys how to uh, get all of these metrics without having to do something like this. So let's create a new cell. OK. And what I'm going to show you guys are uh, some nice methods we can use. So here I'm show another way to get metrics of the models. All right. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to get uh, these metrics from other libraries. So from sklearn, sklearn.metrics, I'm going to import classification report. And from the same library, I'm going to import the accuracy score. All right. So to do that, I just type print, and then we're going to print the classifi classification report on the test data. So that's Y test and of our model's prediction. So right now I'm just going to do logistic regression like we did before, where I'm just showing one model, and then we're going to do it for all of them. So predict uh, X underscore test. and also, I can print the accuracy. So I just say accuracy underscore score. And then we're going to put in the same thing. So I'm just going to copy this up here. There we go. Copy that. And paste that here. OK. So now if I run this, we'll see that we get all of these uh, metrics on the logistic regression model. So we can see the accuracy is the same as what we calculated up here, 0 0.9510489. So that's the same score here. But this time, we don't have to do all of these calculations of uh, the true positive, true negative, false negative, false, false positives. All right. We just have to basically run this one function or method. And then we also get things like the precision and the recall and the F1 score. So I would I like this way a lot better. Now, again, I want it for each model. So I'm going to create a loop. So for I, actually, what I'm going to do is I already have the loop created, right? I'm just going to copy this here. Probably going to copy both of those statements. And there we go. And paste it here. OK. And then I'm just going to tap this on over and maybe print a new line. And then we need to change the 0 to i, because we want to go through all of the models. And so I will run this. And now we can see model 0, which is the logistic regression model, still ha gives us the accuracy and all that data as before. But now we also have the information for the decision tree classifier and for the random forest classifier. All right. So based off of this data here, the model that I think I like the best is, uh, or the model that I think does the best is the decision tree classifier. Now, though it did not do the best in the training uh, on the training data. So if I go back up here, the decision tree did the best on it. Um, but the random forest classifier did pretty well. It it was the second best model out of these three. What really matters to me is how well it uh, generalizes, so how well it does on the test data. And it did the best on the test data here. So let's create a new cell. And in this cell, let's print the prediction of the random forest classifier model. OK? So I'm going to create a variable called pred and set it equal to model at position 2. 
that's our decision tree classifier dot predict and it's going to predict the values on the testing data from the features in the testing data alright and so when I say predict I really mean classify it's going to decide whether or not the patient has cancer or if the patient doesn't have cancer alright so we're going to print the prediction and then I want to print a new line and last I want last but not least I want to print the actual values so that's y underscore test okay so let's run this and what we can see is up here is what our model predicts uh, for each of the patients whether or not they have cancer and here are the actual values uh, of the patients showing if they have cancer or not so we can see if we look just over here the model made a misclassification here the patient did have cancer according to the actual test data and let's see where else can we find um, a mistake like that so here the model was saying that the the patient does have cancer when in actuality the patient did not have cancer okay so we can see that the model is not perfect and what we can do or kind of tweak some of the parameters um, and maybe even test other models as well uh, to see which one's better and try to get that accuracy up because right now it's at 96.5 percent and when you're dealing with uh, human lives you want that to be uh, as close to the actual you want to be as close to 100 percent as possible you want it to be as close as as the actual data is you know you don't want to make mistakes with people lives so anyways guys that's basically it um, I really hope you enjoyed the video please leave any questions you have in the comment section don't forget to hit that like button and that subscribe button and if you found this video helpful please share it I'll be sure to put the code on my github in the description below as well as where I got the data set and you can see a, a description of the data as well and I also put where the original data set came from um, all in the description below so again guys thanks for watching and I'll see you all on the next video on machine learning this is some fascinating stuff and I'll see you guys later thanks for watching bye bye